Hello and welcome to our introduction to machine learning for material science um, series here. Uh, my name is Ben Offerbach. I'm a grad student here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, and today I'll be walking through this lab activity um, and hopefully uh, discussing some of the points, some of the key things to uh, pay attention to. And you know, the things that we're gonna be focusing on is, is you know, what is machine learning? What can it do for material science? Um, what are the things it's good at? What are the things it's not good at? Um, what are some of the strategies that we can use to improve our machine learning models? And what is a common workflow where we can take a data set and then hopefully build a model out of it and start making some predictions? Um, so to jump in, I'll go through initially the um, sections that we'll be covering as we go through. Um, and if I scroll down here, we can see those um, in this notebook that we'll be working through. Um, so section one uh, is on data inspection. So we'll just be looking at, you know, what is the data set we're gonna be working with? Um, what are the things to pay attention to? Um, and specifically, what is, um, how can we clean up the data set so that it's kind of ready for machine learning? Um, section two is feature generation. So this is where we actually generate uh, the key inputs that we're gonna use for our model. Uh, section three is on feature engineering. And for that, we are going to be using those features that we generated and making some modifications to them, hopefully to improve their usability uh, in the model. Section four is on model evaluation. Um, so this is where we start to decide, you know, how are we going to know if our model is performing well? What kind of tests are we going to perform on it? Uh, model uh, Section five is where we actually start fitting and evaluating that model. Um, so we're going to build a, a default model using some, some default settings. Um, and then section six, we're going to start to try to optimize the models. We're going to start to change things um, about the model to affect its performance. And we're going to see if we can improve the performance of the model. And then finally, at the end, we're going to make a few predictions. And we'll see you know, what those predictions entail and what they tell us about you know, how we might use this model going forward. Um, so that goes through all the sections. Um, and the next thing we need to cover is you know, how can you follow along at home for this? So that's one of the things that's really nice about using um, Jupyter Notebooks is this is a you know, fully interactive sort of programming environment and you can follow along and basically run all the code that I'm gonna be running, look at the results and potentially make some changes. Um, and as I walk through, I'll talk through some sections where we might make a few changes. So that if you do have you know, maybe a little bit of programming background, um, or you're just interested in maybe learning a few things, you can make a few small changes and, and affect your results and see how they, um, uh, how they affect what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do. So to start off, where you need to go is to nanohub.org. Um, so this will be what it looks like when you first come here. Um, you will have to log on in order to run the tools that they're hosting here. So nanohub is basically a um, platform where we can host different tools. Um, and run them and they'll basically you know, give us some computing resources to do that. Um, so the two tools that we're going to be looking at are first the uh, lab module itself. Um, so it is under nanohub.org slash tools slash intro ML lab. So you can see that right at the top here, hopefully. Um, so if you go here and then hit launch tool, you'll get exactly to this page that I was looking at a second ago. So this is the notebook um, and it is again running this interactive programming environment for us. Um, the other thing that will be useful um, to know about is this Jupyter Notebook tool. So this is the kind of underlying framework that um, the lab is built off of. You don't need to be running both at the same time or anything like that, um, but I will point out this tool specifically to help save our results and kind of come back later. So once you have the notebook open here, um, you can also go uh, run the notebook tool and you'll get to um, a page that looks something like this here. Um, so this is showing you know, where all the files are on the kind of virtual computer that NanoHub is running for us. And where you're gonna go is under the data section and then under results here under this folder. And you'll get to a number of folders that look like this um, that have numbers next to them. Um, and if this is your first time on NanoHub, you might only see one folder. And it'll hopefully be you know, the folder that was just created for you. So here I have my most recent one. It started an hour ago. So I'm gonna go in here. And then I see here's the intro ML lab you know, folder that it created for me. So I'm gonna go into there and then in the bin. And now I see here's the notebook um, that we're running here at the other tab. Um, and the reason I'm calling attention to that is if we go back to that notebook, what we can see is that we can't actually save this notebook. So I'm looking at the top right here and it has this kind of crossed out save. If I try to click the save icon, it says notebook is read only here in the top right. So it's not gonna let me you know, save any changes that I wanna make. Um, in order to do that, uh, what we need to do is go to the file drop down menu in the top left 
And then what I'm going to do is make a copy of this notebook. So I'm going to make this copy and it'll generate a new tab. And this will be exactly the same as the one that I have um, here, except now I have ownership of this file. So this is a way to um, give me the ability to save and make changes as I go along. So now I have ownership of this notebook, but it's exactly the same as the other one. So I'm actually going to close out of this one. Um, and see, yeah, it's going to ask me if I want to leave. That's okay. Um, so now we have a copy that I have ownership of. So now when I hit save, um, it should save with me. It says checkpoint created. That's awesome. And if I go back here, now I can see the copy exists here. So now if I come back, you know, in a few days or in a week, and if my notebook uh, that we originally started with, you know, got reset or isn't running anymore, then I can come back and this one will have all my saved changes as long as I remember to save. So that should get us going with um, starting to follow along there. Um, the last couple things I'm going to cover is just uh, a few basics of how you know, do we use a Jupyter Notebook. So I mentioned this is like a programming environment. Uh, based on your background, you might be you know, fairly comfortable with that. You might be thinking, you know, how am I actually going to you know, run code here? And the key thing to remember if all else fails is that uh, to run code, all you need to do is select um, a different cell in the notebook. You see I'm just left clicking on kind of the left side here and I get this blue highlight. So I can select all these different cells. And if I just start at the top and hit shift enter, um, shift plus enter, and it will execute code that's in the current cell and go to the next one. Um, and if there's no code there, it'll just skip that cell. So you see this first one just has some images. So I'm just gonna hit shift enter, shift enter, and it'll start running code. And the way that we know that it's running and it ran successfully is we can look on the left here and there's this square bracket. And when it's running, it'll have some stars inside of the square bracket or an asterisk, sorry. Um, and then when it's done, it'll give me a number. And that's basically the number of, um, number of cells that have been ran during this instance. So this is the first cell I ran, so it has a one there. So I'm just gonna keep going down here um, and keep running. And what I'm actually gonna do is go and run through um, everything until I get to section one in the notebook. So I'm just gonna go through here, um, keep going through all the introduction information. Um, there's this section here that basically does a bunch of imports of um, different requirements and different uh, packages that we're gonna use. Um, it isn't super important to, to um, sort of know about those, but um, it's required for doing things later on. So I'm gonna run through all of these until I get to this first section on data cleaning and inspection. Um, and with that, we're gonna stop with the introduction and we'll pick it up um, with the next section where we start going through looking at our data and um, understanding you know, how we're gonna do some data cleaning and other steps like that. So we'll see you in the next one.